You probably think backpacking with kids is probably too hard to even try. Why bother while they're young, right? You might be right, but hopefully you're not. And I want to invite you to do the first step along with me so that you can get over the hurdle of taking your kids into the wilderness on a really easy, light backpacking trip for the first time. Now, I'm no expert. This is my like second or third time taking my kids backpacking. Okay, no, second. Yeah, second, basically. But I've taken my kids camping via multi-day rafting trips a lot, which is a little bit like car camping, but into the wilderness, really awesome, but you can take a lot of stuff, right? You're not carrying it on your back. And not to mention that I actually haven't done a ton of backpacking myself since like decades ago when I was a college student. So we're learning together right alongside. I'm gonna show you what gear we're taking. We don't have the best stuff, but we're making do with what we have. And I'm gonna tell you all about it along the way. So join me in my front yard pack here while my little kid is napping and let's do this. Okay, so to kick things off, I want to emphasize that you can be packing in like the interstitial spaces of your life. I'll give you an example. My husband caught me this morning, like as he was after taking one kid to school and I had, was coming back from the gym, he's like, okay, I packed in a flurry just a couple of things into our big kid's bag, Juniper's bag. Well, I just scratched the surface of starting to pack. I packed up Juniper's backpack with her sleeping bag, a inflatable mattress, hats, two pairs of gloves, and or one hat. Hat, two pairs of gloves, a puffy jacket, and a rain shell. So he got the ball rolling. That's really important. And the first thing you need to do, just start throwing stuff into a pile. You should see my pile off camera right now. Pretty good. So we're gonna confirm because we trust him, but we wanna show it on camera what he put in this bag for my daughter. So my daughter takes this backpack. She's six years old. This will be her second trip backpacking with this pack. So um, not a lot of experience with other packs, but this one seems to be awesome. It's backpacking style. So it has the, the hip belt, which she chose to use, not use last time. She thought it was a pain. We thought that that was the upsell point, but hey, whatever floats her boat and gets her to carry it. So we have her puffy coat. Ooh, a pack of crayons. Huh, wonder if that was meant to go in there. We have one of our sleeping pads. Now I'll roll this out so you can see all of our sleeping pads. There's a lot to say about what types of sleeping pads to bring with your kids, but really like we're kind of upping our quality and our decreasing our weight as we go, as we get into this. So none of our stuff is like the ultimate lightweight things. So, okay, we got her rain jacket. We've got her puffy coat. We've got a pack of crayons. We've got a warm hat, okay? And looks like, ooh, he also packed some gloves, probably for her little brother and for her. So having warm clothes, right? This is tip number two, right? The first one was pack in the interstitial spaces when you can. Tip number two is to always make sure that they're gonna be really comfortable comfortable. And if this means kind of carrying what you feel like is extra bulky gear, but allows them to put on the like cozy, warm little hat, then definitely pack that. I've forgotten that in the past. And then of course you end up giving them whatever you packed for yourself, which is better than nothing or putting like socks on their hands. That works really well too. But it's really nice to think about like when it gets cold, what is my kid going to want to put on? It can be dirty. Okay. You can pack less clothing and just wear dirty stuff. They think that's cool. And then this is her sleeping bag. So let's just pull that out so we can pull out all our sleeping bags. That's sleeping bag number one. She thinks this is super special because this used to be my mom's, her grandma, right? And it then it kind of moved to be this little guy's right here, Wallace's sleeping bag, but now she gets to use it and that's really special for her. I'm just checking my list here. I've got it on a Notion template, which I think is awesome. And I'm gonna share with you in the description below if you'd like to download our checklist for taking kids camping in different types of environments. So um, you'll see a list for car camping or multi-day river camping and a list for backpacking, for instance. So I like this in digital form. I use Notion to keep track of a lot of my life, a lot of my projects, a lot of my personal kind of wins. You can do databases, all kinds of cool stuff in Notion, but we kind of have our adventure hub plan planning database in there, and that's part of this as well. Um, so I like to reference that as I go. As I mentioned, sleeping pad differentiation, right? This also helps with like when a kid somehow just doesn't like what they have going on right now for sleep and you just need to change something. It may literally like not be better or worse, but you just have to change it up. So having different options I've found with my kids camping is really helpful. So we've got this option here, which is a newer version, really small pack, that, sleep, uh, that pad that I just saw you. Old school thermal 
Summer Rest, right? This one's not so bad. It's kind of bulky, pretty heavy, but we're not going super far with kids, so I'm gonna let that one fly. This is awesome, right? I think that this is what a lot of through hikers take, a lot of backpackers, so we upped our gear stock and bought one of these. But this is also great for kids because let me tell you, kids love to turn a four pad sleeping zone into like a gymnastics floor routine, okay? So when you have them flopping around on top of these pads, sometimes they'll yank a pad out of the tent and go put it on some sharp rocks and try to do the same routine. You're gonna say, no, 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 no. no. So this is really helpful for that. This gets thrown down in our camp kitchen. This gets thrown down in all kinds of places when we're just hiking and we wanna take a break and sit down and distract ourselves from how tired we are. We use this one. So we might eventually, you know, the downside is that it's not very comfortable to sleep on. So the kids don't wanna do it. So my husband and I end up doing it. But yeah, you pay that price a little bit. And then our fourth one, again, is another one very similar to this, a little bit more lightweight, um, easy to blow up. I also pulled out, we've got two of these inflatable pillows. Now, if you would ask me that like, are pillows essential? Most people will say, no, go, go lightweight. You don't need the pillow. You can do all kinds of things without pillows like sleep. And But you know what? Prioritizing good sleep, especially for kiddos, but especially for the caretakers of those kiddos, which is you, is really really important when you're out there having fun, when you might get a little bit less sleep than usual because your kids might wake up a few extra times or need to like crawl into your tiny mummy bag anyways. So bring a pillow, right? Half the time my kids start with the pillow and then they just kind of kick it out like they do in their normal beds and I get to steal it maybe like for underneath my knees or something, which has become like my jam since having two babies, right? Okay, so we got a pillow. Let me show you another awesome thing that we do with pillows. So you don't have to go out and buy like a special fancy pillow. All right, I got these two two other options for pillows here. The first one is this sweet, just like simple little fleece bag that if you have any sewing skills or know anybody who does can whip this up. Grandma made it for us and you can easily stuff a puffy coat in here. Um, it's really cozy. It's not super duper lightweight, but for kids, honestly, like this type of thing is really worth it for them to snuggle into if they're into it. Also a great thing for car trips, for the ride there, the ride back, for airplane rides, all kinds of stuff. So I don't bring pillows, I bring really nice stuff sacks. The other version of that, so let me put that up here with my other pillows is that I've always had this stuff sack, but I got this a long time ago back when I was a river guide and it has a fleece liner as well. So really similar thing, except that it's fancy and cost more money. But for people who don't know how to sew, that's a great option as well. Okay, next is our other sleeping bags. I've got a trick here for you. Yes. Okay, your other sleeping bags that you're gonna wanna bring backpacking. So we have a two-year-old, which means he's pretty small, and we have a six-year-old. So I mentioned that the six-year-old gets grandma's old sleeping bag. Um, Adam, or I, will, my husband or I, will use another mummy bag. This is honestly the one that he has repaired many, many, many times since he was in high school. We have another one, another, um, you know, very new fancy branded one that is quite honestly just like, it's a little too tight. It's too much of a mummy. I can't do it. So this one's really nice for that. That. We might take this one. We also have this really cool new one. This is a mountain hardware. This is not sponsored, but um, the Eco AF really comfortable bag. Again, you can see that a lot of our gear is like from two decades ago. So we slowly upgrade to really nice things. And this is one of those. So we've had a habit of changing this one in for this. But if we do want to bring four bags, we'll put the little kid in here. But here is the super duper trick. So on our trip to India, Adam and I got this, what we thought was like being super tricky and lightweight, right? We were gonna do a self-support expedition with our kayaks to India. And so we got a double mummy sleeping bag, right? Doesn't it sound nice? Like just cuddle with your lover in here, just snuggle right up. But in reality, like luckily we're both fairly medium sized people. This was super tight. And yes, it compacted down to less than two sleeping bags, which was really nice. But I don't know if we'll ever like sleep in it again, but it is so awesome to sleep in this with one of your small kiddos, okay? So in the middle of the night, my two-year-old just kicks off whatever sleeping system he's in. We never ended up buying one of those sleeping bag kind of bags for him. Um, that might have been really nice, but we just never did it. So I can pull him into this thing with me and it doesn't feel like we're kind of suffocating in there together. So I am so happy we have this bag now that we're parents. Okay, let me show you what we use for our tent. This 
next little baby is our tent. Pretty small, pretty awesome. It is called a Mega Mid, and I'll show some B-roll of it here. But the Mega Mid is essentially like a teepee. These are, this is the single pole that goes up down the middle of it, kind of the middle of your teepee. We might also use our trekking poles for that sometimes, just so that we're not taking two things at one time. We really like this because it just does go down really small. If it was super hard raining, this might be tough because water can come underneath it really easy. There is no like enclosed system, right? If it was really, really buggy, really mosquito-y, this wouldn't work so well. If it was super freezing, this wouldn't work so well. But let me tell you, for the first or second time that you're taking your kids backpacking, you're probably not gonna go out in weather like that, right? So this is kind of something that we had from when we were like hardy 20-something year olds traveling the world and doing awesome rad things. And now we get to use it with our kids as well, which is funny, but we're kind of using it in a situation that's a little less hardy, a little less badass. Pretty essential to the tent system is also our um, tarp underneath it. This is just like a piece of Tyvek that we got from a big roll of it that our friend who was doing repairs on their house had. So that's our great tarp system for underneath that. Okay, next is the kitchen. All right, we're ready to pack our camp kitchen, but in the meantime, Jasper has woken up from his nap. Say hi, Jasper. Hi. <laughs> so he's gonna pack with me. As we look at our list, I made sure to double check that again as we move into a new genre. So we did most of our sleeping stuff. I say most because I wasn't looking at the list as I was talking about everything, but I will right before we go. So having a digital list is so fantastic because I can check things off and then next time I, the go around, I can just uncheck everything. So for our kitchen, we'll start with just simple eating. Okay, mommy's talking. Shh. We use these for bowls and these for spoons. These are nice and long to be able to get in. Oftentimes we'll just take two of them because we bring two pots and you can really only kind of like rehydrate one thing at a time inside that pot um, until we get a bag where we can like rehydrate meals inside the bag. Um, I'm not super fan of these bowls, right? They're like the ones that clip together but sometimes they unclip and they get caught in here. They're nice and lightweight and having a bowl with kids is really nice because they can hold it. It can kind of nestle into their legs a little bit more, much less likely to spill and get really sad after that. Right, Jasper? Yeah. Yeah. But if you have another solution for these, put it in the comments below. That goes for any of this gear. If you have, you found something that really works. This is stuck. Yeah, this one moves though. There you go, like that. Yeah. Okay, we have a bigger fuel canister. If we were doing more than one night, we might take this big one, but we don't need it because we're just doing one night this trip. And we do have two pots. So my husband has geeked out a little bit about, oh, it's okay, it's hard. I think, you know, it's hard because, oh, I think it's stuck. And also you're sitting in the way. There's a Jasper in the way. Here we go. So Adam has gotten into backcountry hunting, my husband. My first mule deer buck. Which is really cool because he started to geek out again on ultralight gear. He's got to carry a lot of weight sometimes, especially if he harvests an animal on his back. And um, since we haven't been backpackers since like 20 years ago when really I did like one trip in college and that was kind of it. We've been, since then, whitewater kayakers. We're able to stuff all this stuff inside our boats, which means that weight isn't like the ultimate decider of what you take and what you don't. But we have upgraded our kitchen system here, which is really fun. These are awesome pots. Um, we have a video about our kitchen system as well, so I'll link to that. But we have these tiny, tiny little stoves. He's actually got two of them because he was testing and comparing them. I'll show you both of them here. We won't bring both of them necessarily unless we forget and they're just in there and then surprise, we'll have carried two into the backcountry. But we've got two different stoves here that each screw right into our canister, our fuel canisters, which fit right in the bottom of these pots. Sometimes we'll put like a little pack of tissues right on top to kind of just preserve everything from clanking around too much. And uh, never can have too many tissues out with kids, right? Am I right? And then also, let's not forget this guy, the lighter. Super essential. Again, that's one of those things that I often look at my list, like right before we're getting in the car and I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, did you pack a lighter? Um, something good to get your eyes on though, as you're packing. Tasha. Can you, but you're right in the, right in the camera. Can you come over here maybe? And we'll look at the binoculars together. Okay, so before I get torn away too quickly here, I've got one more thing that I wanna tell you about. So like I said, my husband's gotten into backcountry hunting, um, which means he's got this really nice pair. Come on, come on. 
<gasps> of binoculars. Do you want to sit on my lap? And this is something really fun for kids that we often regret not bringing because we've forgotten it. So I'm going to add it to my list right after this video. While Jasper inspects the sleeping system, I'm going to keep talking about the binoculars. This is a fun thing to have because you're out on this backpacking adventure so kids can immerse themselves in wilderness, in nature that is a wild, wild place. They can kind of get their own wildness and kids really see things that are like three feet away really good. But if you can bring into focus, into clarity, something like way off in the distance, ideally like a large animal that's not going to come close to you or somewhere that you just can't reach as kids, right? Like a glacier like a mountaintop, like a summit, something like that. It kind of just has these moments with kids where they're like, whoa, that's out there. And you get these deep kind of like wonder and awe. So you can get that without binoculars, but that's a hot tip. It's something really fun if you can bring it. They're a little bit heavier, so it's not ultra light. Oh, thanks, babe. Here, do you want to open this one? But this is nice. He's got the pack that goes right on his front, um, so it kind of evens him out a little bit more. So what we did there was mostly the sleeping and the food systems. Our last system is like our, um, our personal stuff that we need, so toiletries and clothing, which I'm not going to do a video of, but I'll include it in our pack list. If you want to download that, again, that's in the description below. And be sure to stay tuned to see if this actually all got packed and how that works out in our next video. So we'll make sure we make updates over there to things that we took, we didn't take, and what worked and what didn't work. Lessons learned every time we go out there. And remember, it's these small moments that lead to a life of practice. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the holder? Where's the holder? Yeah. Hmm. You mean the handles like this? No. 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 The holder? This. Oh, that's the lighter. Oh. I'll show you how that works after this video. Small moments, it's a lifetime of adventure. Just get out there and do it. Put in the comments below what you would change with any of these systems and we'll see you on the backside.